let's read our next example. Calculate the pH in the solution formed by adding 10 mils of 0.1 molar HCl. Note to self, that's a strong acid. To 20 mils of a 0.1 molar ammonia, weak base. Strong acid plus weak base. What I'm thinking with strong versus weak, do the stoichiometry first, followed by the Henderson-Hasselbalch. Let's begin by considering the reaction in which HCl, strong acid, reacts with NH3, a weak base. Thinking of chloride really as simply the spectator ion, it might even be helpful to simply write strong acid as H plus with weak base, I think I'll do that, weak base as NH3, and we can see the conjugate forming then as NH4 plus 1. So here's the weak base and its conjugate acid, setting up the buffered system. If we begin by thinking about 10 mils of the strong acid, and its concentration is 0.1 molar. Volume of the weak base is 20 mils, and its concentration also 0.1 molar. Let's hit molarity times volume and find the number of moles, and we'll consider the stoichiometry. So 0 0.01 liters times 0.1 molarity gives me a number of moles of 0, 0, 0,001 moles of the strong acid. We're denoting HCl simply as H+. And 0 0.02 times 0 0.1 gives us 0 0.002 moles of the weak base. Seeing the stoichiometry from our equation is a nice one-to-one -one ratio. The smaller of our two numbers becomes a limiting reagent. The strong acid will be completely consumed, leaving excess amounts of the weak base ammonia. So if 0 0.001 moles of the acid is consumed, there's nothing left in solution that would affect the pH. The hydrogen ion is completely consumed. We do not care about that when we calculate pH. If it were an excess reagent, it alone would determine the pH, but since it's out of solution, we use it to determine the stoichiometry. So 0 0.001 moles of the weak base were consumed, giving us 0 0.001 moles left after the equation. And knowing that at the beginning of our experiment, there would be zero amount of ammonium, and along the way, produce 0 0.001 moles of that conjugate acid. So remember, the limiting reagent determines how much of it was consumed for the other reactant and how much of the other product was actually made. So here we're noticing again the amount of the conjugate pair being equivalent. And when we think about the Henderson-Hasselbalch, pH will be determined simply by pKa when the conjugate pairs cancel. So pH can be found by the negative log of the Ka value. Now notice, ammonia is a base. When I look up a Kb for ammonia, it is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Henderson-Hasselbalch requires a Ka value, not a Kb. So I simply take the ion product constant for water, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, and I place it over the Kb value of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Ka over Kb inside of this parentheses does indeed flip it to a Ka constant. Plus the log of the ratio of 0 0.001 moles of our conjugate base over 1 or 0, 0, 0.001 moles of the conjugate acid. Base over acid moles drops out because they are equivalent. So pH can be found directly by taking pKa, and let's hit the negative log of 1e negative 14 divided by 1.8e negative 5. Remember what we're doing in this parenthesis is taking Kw over Kb to convert to Ka. Henderson-Hasselbalch requires a Ka value. And when I hit, the pH is 9.26 pH units, which makes sense. We're in a basic range. Up above, we were titrating in the acid range, and we came out with a value below 7 of 4.2 up there. 
So here we had an example of strong acid with weak base, again Henderson-Hasselbalch. Just to compare, I'm noticing that if I'm given a weak base, it's still a base over acid conjugate ratio, but the only difference is that I had to flip Kb to Ka to get Henderson-Hasselbalch to work. Alrighty.